good afternoon all the beautiful ladies and handsome boys uh, we had a very good presentation by dr makrand rani who has nicely depicted how to make love and not babies in younger age group now my role is i should not neglect the elderly patients because sex has no expiry date so i think even the elderly fellows also have complete right to make love but not baby but sometime accident can happen okay so let's start the presentation so i am sure most of these young boys are watching sunny leon except this beautiful lady like that only the like in ages or since ug days we are reading about menopause more in even datta william we have chapters on menopause but have you seen chapter on andropause no we have seen small paragraph on andropause so like this bodybuilder salman that andropause is always been neglected so i must congratulate ima team that they have taken this bold step they have taken a very nice initiative of uh, this yearly conference and they are putting this male sexual health as the uh, topic for this and it is really the need for time because as a andrologist i see lot many patients from younger age group to elderly patient we are facing this male sexual problem and this has to get the attention what is andropause andropause per se is a uh, phenomena which is with the age slow growing phenomena it is biochemical or clinical scenario where there is decrease in testosterone level but it, it has got a uh, vast effect on the significant quality of life and on different multiple organ systems by menopause if you consider it is a universal phenomena a timely phenomena where there is a complete cessation of the complete uh, gonadal uh, hormonal levels while this andropause is not like that andropause is insidious slow process and it is not timely process there are different terminologies for andropause like in different articles we read about menopause or there is late onset hypogonadism or partial androgen deficiency in aging male or androgen deficiency in aging male menopause sometimes relative hypogonadism or hypoandrogenemia these are the different terms which come across there is again uh, in different articles or times of india or in magazines we see mid life crisis sometimes overlapping with the andropause but it may not be true let's go to basics because this gonadal axis hypothalamo pituitary gonadal axis carries very important role because here the hormonal secretions occurs and we uh, for the management and treatment part this uh, hypothalamo pituitary gonadal axis need to be understood well hypothalamus which secretes the gonadotropin releasing hormone and pituitary from anterior pituitary the fsh and lh is secreted which stimulate the leydig cells which causes the testosterone production the testosterone has got negative feedback on either pituitary or hypothalamus so a cortical function like our uh, cerebral cortex different neurotransmitters they have a role on or uh, even limbic system they have role on the hypothalamus and accordingly the axis works and there these are the main things where the psychogenic factors play important role in whole of the andropause management as we all know testosterone production occurs mainly in testes but apart from that a small proportion always uh, is synthesized in the adrenal gland and the production occurs from cholesterol in the leydig cells now this uh, secreted androgen 
is present in three forms, either a free form, which is of our importance, or which is loosely bound to albumin, that is around 40%. And the, uh, the more densely bound is the bound to the sex hormone binding globulin. So total testosterone out of this, the bioavailable testosterone, which is free and which is bound to the albumin. That is of our clinical importance. How much is the prevalence of andropause? Now, andropause, exact prevalence in India is not known. But different articles mention that the as the age progresses, at the age above 50 years, there is always decrease in testosterone level by 1%. Some studies there are mentioned at after the age of 60 years, there is almost 20% decrease in the testosterone level. And uh, the bioavailable testosterone is almost uh, in 50% it is less. So if you see at age of 70 years, the only uh, the bioavailable testosterone remains almost 20 to 30%. Not only the levels go down, but the diurnal variations also uh, differ. Like in younger age group, if we see the at morning hours, like 7 to 10 a.m., the maximum testosterone levels are there. As the day progresses, evening time, the testosterone load levels goes down. But in elderly, these variations are not there. So diurnal changes also flatten, this curve flattens with the age. There are different target organs which we need to understand because that is the main organs that they produce the symptoms. In that mainly, suppose brain. The brain, uh, it gives testosterone, gives aggression, cognition, the memory, all, even in muscle, muscle mass increases, lean body mass increases, the fat get reduced. In kidneys, it produces erythropoietin and thereby the hematocrit or hemoglobin increases. In bones, it strengthens and mineralization the bone. So if we consider pathophysiology, the bioavailable testosterone goes down with the age. What are the reasons? There could be either decreased production by testes or the testicular size goes down or there are certain critical illnesses which lead to this problem. The increase in stress level or testicular trauma or genetic disorders, chronic illnesses because this geriatric age group most of time they have associated diabetes, hypertension, COPD. Then different medications, like in COVID time, we have seen rampant use of corticosteroids. Those also can have deleterious effects on the testosterone. Obesity, malnutrition, chronic substance abuse, or even physical stress or surgical stress can lead to decreased bioavailable testosterone. What are the signs and symptoms with this patient present? Because when it comes to OPD, I have seen, or most of my urology colleagues or andrology colleagues will say, that erectile dysfunction is the first commonest presentation because they hide other symptoms. But that is our, I can say, our clinical uh, judgment to take out the, dig out that history and see for all other factors. Like they will have reduced energy level, they will have decreased sense of well being, less confidence, then decreased, apart from erectile dysfunction, they have will have ejaculatory problems. The commonest is premature ejaculation. They, they, they will have the decreased lean body uh, protein mass, muscle mass, and more fat. And some patients may have infertility because some patients, they have one child of 10, 12 years, and then now they are planning for the pregnancy. So they can have, they can have presentation with infertility also. The other uncommon features like sweat, exact, uh, Exaggerated sweating, anxiety, irritable mood, all this is to need to be elicited. As I told, erectile dysfunction is the commonest presentation. What is erectile dysfunction? It is inability to attain and maintain the erection sufficient for intercourse. Now, it could be because of the different elements, like it could be arteriogenic, it could be neurogenic, or there could be medication associated erectile dysfunction or because of hypogonadism. But in clinical practice, we see most of time psychogenic element is always associated. If we consider the uh, prevalence at age of 55, it is around 8%. At 
and as the age progresses at around age of 75 it goes to 75 percent in this kind of patient as i told detailed history is mandatory because many things you get to know and most of time even in practice without prescribing any medication this patient can be treated with simple counseling but a lot of counseling is required lot of time you need to spend with the patient to elicit the history you need to see for morning erection whether very important uh, guide because as i told in diurnal variation the morning time testosterone levels are high so these morning erections will always be affected so most of time these patients will say the morning erections have gone down the other ejaculatory disturbances like premature ejaculation is commonest then other comorbidities like cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension need to be seen. Yesterday, I have seen a patient, a 60-year gentleman. So, I have seen a erectile dysfunction the problem. I have seen a patient with diabetes, I have blood pressure, I have seen a patient with diabetes, I have seen a patient Then I just checked blood pressure. Blood pressure was 200 by 110. So, in this elderly patient after age of 45 don't neglect this even vitals the clinical examination because erectile dysfunction might be the first sign of presentation for this hypertension cardiovascular disease so should always pay attention apart from that a clinical examination now most of patients they see a newspaper they go to a particular uh, sexologist they might be qualified they might be quacks and they are uh, like even a uh, complete weight treatment. Nobody examines the genitals. So most neglected part is the examination of genitals, which probably a surgeon or andrologist never miss. In genital examination, the foremost is the testicular size or any pathology in the testis. Sometimes it is the child or operator crypto organism. Only one testis will be there. Sometimes now, last week I have seen a... Uh, <clears throat> A student, a foreigner student, which is there in the Sandeep Foundation, his both testes were small. So he presented with erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. But once you examine, you get the cause, real cause for the uh, problem. Then certain infections are there. You need to see the size of palace. Sometimes balanophosphitis are there, tight pimosis is there. So those are the organic factors. Once you correct those, the erectile dysfunction will vanish. The next medical problem associated is osteoporosis. As the age progresses, the bone mineralization goes down. And uh, if you see the incidence after age of 60, around 2.2% is the fracture incidence. And lifetime risk of fracture is around 13%. The commonest is hip and followed by vertebrae. So hypogonadism has clear cut, uh, a clear cut role in osteoporosis. As compared to eugonadal, almost half the demineralized bone will be there in the hypogonadal male. The metabolic syndrome, as I, saw, uh, as I told, metabolic syndrome uh, or syndrome X need to be seen because erectile dysfunction most of time will have one or the other component of this. Either there will be obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia or insulin resistance. So as I told in the gonadal axis, there are a different, at different level, different causes are there. Like suppose we see a testicular causes, it is called primary testicular failure. So what could be the causes? There could be viral infection like mumps, leprosy or AIDS. There could be testicular trauma, torsion or previous surgery history. There could be history of irradiation because we see testicular tumors and testicular tumors which have been irradiated for one testis, they can have effect on the other testis also or for any other cause they have taken chemotherapy, they will have impact on the testes or different medication history need to be elicited. The other cause is like higher centers like hypothalamus or pituitary, if the problem is at that level. So what could be the causes? Pituitary tumor like prolactinoma. It is not very uncommon. We see commonly these micro uh, adenomas or even macro adenomas. So, uh, it is not only for theory sake. We see a lot of patients. 
then different tumors like craniopharyngioma or granulomatous diseases like tuberculosis, sarcoid, histiocytosis, or certain autoimmune diseases. Again, there could be previous history of uh, brain surgery or medication. There could be some mixed variety where mainly the acute or chronic illnesses, aging, hemochromatosis, HIV, or obesity can have action on both. Now, how do you diagnose the testosterone deficiency? As I told, these patients will present with signs and symptoms. If they don't present, we need to elicit. And the other is demonstration of low testosterone level. So how do we do the testosterone level? The testosterone level need to be done. The sample need to be sent between 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Most of time, I get patients who have given sample at evening hour and obviously they will show the low testosterone level. So first you need to elicit at what time they have given sample. So consider that diagonal variation. Then different labs have got different reference range. So consider those reference range. Then certain labs, they are not standardized. They, uh, which method they have used, that need to be considered for this. So as a general, for as what we follow, in practice, in testosterone, suppose the range is between 300 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter, it is considered normal. If it is less than 200 nanograms, then it is obviously a hypogonadal state. But some patients come in, in between category, like the testosterone level may be between 200 to 3, 350. Then we need to recheck the testosterone level, or we need to check for the pre testosterone level. If again those testosterone levels are low, then obviously the that is the hypogonadal state, and then we have to check further hormone that is the LH, luteinizing hormone. Suppose that hormone levels are also low, then obviously the problem is at the higher center. It is hypogonadal hypogonadism, and the causes are different as I told. But if the testo uh, LH levels are high then obviously the causes are at the testicular level. And because of negative feedback, that is going hard. There are, uh, once this patient we diagnose, we start with testosterone formulation. In practice, we immediately don't jump on the testosterone formulation. There are different, uh, as I told, uh, counseling is, plays very vital role. We need to get the health checkup done for this patient to check for the other cardiac and cardiovascular problems. Then sometimes we tell them that a lifestyle modification, diet, and other factors. Now, what are these testosterone formulations available? There are historically, if we see the different testosterone formulations have come up. If we see there are testosterone gels which are available, then there are uh, injections, tablets, pellets, or buccal delivery systems are there. Some are the scrotal, uh, those uh, patches are there. So all these, but in day-to-day uh, -day practice, we use either the tablet or injection. Commonly, the injections do very well in these patients. There are certain clear contraindications to testosterone therapy. We must know the among the the, the metastatic carcinoma prostate or breast CA or undiagnosed prostate nodule is there or there is unexplained rise in PSA or hematocrit is more than 50 or unstable or severe congestive cardiac failure because this can lead to hazardous effect if we start testosterone therapy. As these patients are elderly above the age of 50, most of time this prostate enlargement will be associated. So consider this and get checked for the prostate problem. Testosterone replacement therapy uh, as TRT, what we label. If it is problem is detected in younger age group, we can think about all the formulations. But as the middle age or elderly, we should see a uh, few things before starting the treatment. And those are in the protocols only. Like digital rectal examination has to be done. PSA levels or history of LUTS has to be elicited. In elderly patient, apart from this, cardiac evaluation or sleep apnea test, has to be done. Once we start the treatment with testosterone replacement therapy, certain things need to be monitored. One is symptomatic improvement. The other is bone mineral density. Then testosterone need to be checked at three months. 
then again we need to see for PSA, DRE, and symptomatology for the lower urinary tract. Then hemoglobin need to be checked or lipid profile need to be checked. Now there are uh, this monitoring criteria like clinical response. When do you will find the improvement in clinical response? We see sometimes at one month also they improve, but we have to see at around three months and then uh, almost annually. Then testosterone levels we have to see three monthly. Hematocrit baseline we see and then three monthly and then annually. Bone mineral density we have to see yearly. And DRE we have to check for three months and then as per the guidelines of the problem. If the PSA levels are high or they are rising in annual checkup or there are associated lower urine tract, then surely urological consultation need to be taken. In practice, if we see is there are borderline testosterone levels and if you start testosterone replacement therapy, the results are not that satisfactory. There will not be much improvement in sexual function or libido. But if that is pretty low, less than 200 nanograms per deciliter, and you start TRT, then obviously this patient will have good improvement in their sexual life, in libido, and their even physical well-being improvement will be there. As I told, these factors like lifestyle modification, diet, then quitting the smoking or tobacco habits, then uh, meditation, yoga, because uh, most of time, though there will be organic cause, but 95% these patients will have psychogenic element and those psych psychogenic elements can be abolished by these ways. So, as Makran told, he, the, we should make love, but not babies. Now, again, I want to emphasize this elderly crowd where I want to make them sexually active without hampering their life and continuing their sexual life or making them enjoy the love. We know a great example, probably all ladies must have met Milin Suman, a 52 year gentleman, fitness freak. In one of the gathering, I think we had he as a chief guest. So he has married to a girl of his half age. So why not we should offer all our elderly gentlemen this kind of sexually active life. As I told, contraception has no any, uh, there should not be neglection in contraception. Make love, because of that, these accidents can happen and they can surprise even the uh, family members. To conclude my talk, so as menopause occurs, andropause, andropause does occur, and it is commonly seen after the age of 40 years. And the early diagnosis and early hormonal treatment is must, and that will help the patient in all the ways. The testosterone replacement therapy must always be administered by a very responsible person or a physician or by andrologist and a strict supervision and strict criteria need to be followed. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such an eye-opening session. Now I invite questions from our delegates. I have a request for IMA members. Like there is one pink uh, adolescent awareness program which IMA is running. If I am not aware of that, why we don't start a program for adolescent boys or young boys? Because in practice we see not many boys. Means boys come with 20 years, not 24 years. And what are the so many myths, misbeliefs they have in their mind? Even regarding masturbation, so many things. So we can have a great initiative and we can uh, educate this at very younger age group and have a good healthy further life. Okay. Uh, but later on the lockdown came and I think it was now back on the day.
probably what I think it should be only boys and only male speaker because I think boys always uh, they will not be able to uh, tell in front of girls or ladies. That is my suggestion. Yes. Andropause, we don't recommend estrogen, those. we recommend testosterone, but as I told, it is in the demonstrated way. Suppose you don't demonstrate that low testosterone, we don't prescribe, because there are so many things with testosterone also. So why to give uh, hormonal preparation if with simple counseling or diet modification or simple yoga exercise can solve the problem? <laughs> But no, we don't give it male. I request Dr. Umesh Nagapurkar, sir. One more question. Please, sir. You should be, because uh, last time, not only antidepressant, last time I had a patient uh, who was looking by history, a psychogenic erectile dysfunction. He was saying, even sir, I take beer, I perform well. So does the beer have some aphrodisiac effect? No. It works probably at the higher center, reduces the anxiety, and he is doing well. Same way, sir, the patient who has some anxiety issues or they are in depression, obviously this antidepressant will work on higher center, which has got most important role in sexual function. What about counseling you said? Yes. How type of counseling you are going to do? Sometimes this patient takes 45 minutes of mine. So I feel I have taken only a little consultation and given my precious one hour. But it is uh, promising. Very promising. Because a lot of patients, I am telling you one example, a Muslim guy, uh, who after one and a half year sent me an SMS, Doctor, you treated me. And I, I have been blessed with a baby girl now, and thanks a lot. So it is a, a kind, kind of uh, encouragement for us. Uh, I will take two minutes, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, regarding question on antidepressant, uh, and Dr. Himan Solani, president of IIM Masik, and I am also a psychiatrist. So whether antidepressants work in sexual dysfunction, uh, if we know lack of sexual desire, loss of libido is also a feature of depression. So more often than not, as uh, we treat the depression and mood is elevated, sexual desire can also be elevated and it can help in sexual dysfunction. On the other hand, yes, some antidepressants like SSRIs do have sexual dysfunction, uh, loss of libido, but uh, that is temporary and uh, there are always other antidepressant options available. About alcohol, sir mentioned, I remember from my UG days one famous sentence from uh, a forensic book, alcohol kindles the desire but decreases the function. So this inhibition, as you rightly said, it reduces the anxiety level. So it reduces the inhibition, so it helps you to enjoy it more. So temporarily it does help in your own sexual act, but in long term it actually reduces your sexual function. So, sir, 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 what is your experience about Ayurvedic medicine or? Herbal medicine in erectile dysfunction. Yes, they do well because I have seen we use certain herbal products. So they do well because they might be working, they might be acting as placebo, we don't know. Because there are no uh, such a valid evidence behind that. But they do well. We are using that and uh, the patients get benefit with that. 